Hello ladies and gentlemen, the guy in the white shirt is back which means that I am already recording again for Chessable. 1D4 is underway but I'm also recording now a YouTube <coughs> video and um, we are going to go against the trends today because uh, every man and his dog is talking about the um, unfortunate blunder that uh, Vichy uh, walked into with that meeting too but I felt like it would be a very cheap way to proceed on with the Norway chess recap so instead I'm going to bring you now the uh, the Armageddon game between Carlsen and Vashie Lagrave MVL which was not a particularly high quality game if you look at the number of blunders but boy there was a lot there to unpack so let's have a look at this um, Grimfeld as per expected from the Frenchman and his bishop b5 variation is uh, picking up again in popularity a little bit. Uh, at first it was the big thing in the 1992 European Championship, which was actually held in Hungary, which is why I remember this. And uh, a few players there tried this line. Amongst them, uh, chief among uh, them was Vladimir Kramnik, actually, who back then was the up-and-coming Russian star. And indeed, he did beat, among others, two Hungarian GMs, Sandra Shadorian and Jozef Horvat, uh, with this system. The idea is to provoke some uh, queenside pawn weakening moves whilst rerouting the bishop to the optimal diagonal with white. We are going to follow here theory for a fair while. And in fact, we are actually following a game which between uh, Dubov and Nepo. So that raises the question of whether this was Carson's prep for the World Championship that he never got to use and so he now gave it away or maybe he just came up with it uh, afterwards, we will never know. C5, of course, as always, black wants to undermine the white central pawn formation as soon as possible in the Grimfeld, Knight C6, and this is where the novelty came, pawn E5, Dubov played D5 against Nepo and actually ended up winning but uh, the game was very very drawish for the most part. e5 is a very committal move that gives up the light squares but on the flip side now white has got some kind of a kingside initiative <coughs> excuse me brewing. Bishop f5 a clever counter pin against the hanging knight on c6 takes takes and just to show you how difficult it is to learn chess from the machine the machine will tell you that the best move for white here is virtually the ugliest move white can play, which is DC5, breaking the pawn chain into two isolated double pawns. And yet, it turns out that after queen takes, rook takes, knight d5, knight d4, white is actually unable to draw arrows, but stands better with uh, the two black pawns hanging. Absolutely insane variation. Would never ever occur to me to take out of a chain like this. Queen d3 was played, less optimal, queen d7, rook d1, rook d8, bishop f4. Maggie is building up a kingside attack, that's his main plan. But actually, I have to say that the Frenchman deals with this beautifully. Check out the defense. Take, take, e6, fixing the pawn, and rerouting now the knight with knight e7 via knight g6. No worries, we are safe. H6 allowing the king to come out here, denying the knight to go to g5, all g, queen f4, queen g3, king h7. <coughs> and here, Magnus did something that I find so amazingly just awesome to watch. Like the way how these plans formulate in the head, head of a, a world champion or someone of that caliber is just unbelievable. So what Magnus did here is he played d5. And by the way, most of his moves from here on out are bad, but I'm loving them. Absolutely gorgeous chess. Chess, check this out. Black is forced to take this way, and now he's already eyeing with this. Yeah? But at the same time, of course, the idea behind d5, the other idea, was to bring the rook across. Not bad. And then all of a sudden, the attack gains momentum again. So he goes rook b4. And now after rook c4, this becomes the meaningful motive. Take, take, e6. Terrible move. But what a brilliant idea. Absolutely love it. 
The whole sequence is beautifully forced, except it's a forced win for Black, but um, I still admire the world champion's imagination and attacking style, and it's just rotten luck that there is a spectacular defense here with queen c8, bishop takes an f4. <coughs> Excuse me, and after queen g4, king g7, um, the pass pawns will decide the fate of the game. Instead, the uh, MVL went takes, sacking the exchange. And even here, actually, white needs to be very careful to be able to hang on to a draw because these pawns are superb annoying. Rook e1, queen d7, queen b6, a mistake according to the engine. King g7 and g3, yet another blunder by the engine's measure who tells us that rook d1 was forced to hold d4 back up. Instead, g3 was played, and now after d4, we are looking at a position that is evaluated as minus 6, according to the mighty machine. Simply uh, push, push, and push. Not exactly a very <coughs> complex idea. When you have got pass pawns, you need to push them, right? Well, there we go. f4, another blunder by black there. Queen c5, take, take, knight f4. Now, Magnus needed to take this and bail out with a draw, with check. King f1, queen f3, and then there are various checks here and here, and that secures a draw, which is what should he should have done. Instead, he went queen e3, counter blunder. Now, knight d3 wins for black. For the record, 3 minutes 40 for white, 1 minute 20 for black. Knight d3, rook b1, queen e6, another blunder. <coughs> And now Magnus actually exploits it correctly by playing rook b7, forcing the queen to take. Note that the queen is now hanging for free. And thus introducing this pawn in the defense. Now this should be fair and square a draw. But not quite what happened. Look, c3, rook c7, knight b4, all good. Knight e1. King f2 was the way to go. I'm not sure why Magnus played knight e1. Maybe he had ideas of playing it still for a win due to... The opponent's limited time, <coughs> excuse me, I don't know, but it looks very fishy. Rook c8 takes, king f1, take, take, and now we are headed for a fascinating endgame. It's, according to the engine, dead even, but very complicated stuff is happening here. Black has a lot of pawns, but black also has a trap knight. Oops. Huh. And now, unfortunately for MVL, the wheels fell off. He played h5, correct. King c2, h4, correct. Rook b1, king f6, correct. And after king b3, he just lost it, both figuratively and literally. The calm and measured h3 would have been an easy draw, with king takes c3, no, c2, excuse me, king g5, king b3, pawn down, king takes, king g4, and we just walk the king pawn walks in. In the meantime, white eats the pawns and literally everything disappears. Actually, I will show you what it looks like. So here, here, here. Um, actually, no, wait, I went the wrong way. H2 first, king b4, king here, king here, king here, king takes, queen, tuck, tuck, king in, king in, king in, king in, tuck, tuck and draw. That would have been the right outcome, I suppose. But instead, MVL went knight b4 right away, and now the white king is one step closer to action. That said, still, there was a blunder here with rook a1. <clears throat> rook f1 check was vital to force the king to choose a side, and either side is going to have some downsides, because the problem now, if I understand this correctly, although now I'm also a bit confused, is that the pawn is not quite down here yet, so I get to take and cover it. Uh, even this looks iffy to me. I think black has a chance here. But look what happened. Rook a1. Now it's dead draw. C2, correct. H3, correct. H2, correct. Or king f5. King g5 was played, and that is the big problem there. H2 is also bad, apparently, because, uh, of course it is, because we just catch the pawn and we eat this guy here, right? So the idea is this. You bring the king closer to this pawn, but it's very important which square you choose. 
and the, this is actually the very end of the game but this is the most exciting part so king g5 loses because now we have king d3 and all of a sudden king g4 king e2 king here <coughs> and we have got check and the black king is walking into mate here that is just gorgeous and we are going to be able to take with check and take this as well um or we'll just play pass and uh, eventually now i can hunt this down with the king and the rook still holds that here comes the trick what he should have done instead which of course you can't find these subtleties in like how much time did he have even hardly any king f5 is the correct move with the idea to come this way king d3 h2 and now if king back you go king e4 and now the rook can never take because it's queen and if the king runs here we run here if the king runs here we run here and it's not winnable if rook passes we pass with the pawn rook pass pass rook pass whatever and we can even break with f4 take take the rook can't leave the back rank and like i said as soon as the king chooses one way to go the black king immediately responds by going the other direction for example king f2 king here king g2 d4 and now we are just pushing down and the king comes down and it's an easy draw if i go this way king here 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 <clears throat> and now white even has to be careful but <clears throat> unfortunately for mvl he went g5 and after king d3 king g4 king a2 uh rook g1 check yeah it was all she wrote actually he resigned after rook g1 check a really tragic end to a game that uh, could have had uh, any outcome literally but uh, now maggie is uh, taking again potentially the lead um it will be very interesting to see the last round but with that in mind i also would like to add that i think that the vast majority of the chess world is already looking to the next thing which is gonna be the big big thing and that's gonna be the candidates so i'm super excited to see how that's gonna go i will have a few more coaching videos for you and educational videos between this recap and the candidates and of course we still have one more round to go so let's see how we go with that please don't forget to like to sub to comment and you can also now support me with the super thanks down below if you so desire thanks for those who cho chose to do so i will see you in the next video bye